story that we just saw, it appears that the the refugees actually have no right to that land. I, I don't know. It's just we've kind of accepted them being there. I'd always thought maybe that was uh, governments had allocated that particular land to them because that's where we've always known them to be. But judging from this story this morning, mm. it seems as if they had no right to the land at all. Exactly. Well, I mean, the fact is that um, they had a right subject to the right of original owners of um, those lands. So, so long as the original owners do not assert that right, you know, they, they continue to remain in possession. Uh, like this very this very instance right but for as long as i can remember that's where the refugees the liberian refugees have settled that's where they've been so in this case can we say that they or squatters in general have any rights at all they've been there for so long yes squatters squatters um have rights or i may put it that squatters may have rights because um, generally speaking we can say that squatters do not have rights generally speaking uh, the reason being that when you look at article 18 of the 1992 Constitution, the Article 18 actually specifically says that every person has a right to own property, either individually or, um, I mean, together with other but people. But in this case, do they own <coughs> the property? Well, I mean, when squatters, once you talk about right, uh, then we'll be talking about which right, you know, and when it comes to property, it's all about ownership right, and um, even if a person temporarily is given an opportunity to be there. The person becomes a licensee subject to the original right, you know, of the owner of the property. Right. And when you look at Article 18 two, it makes it very clear that um, no one shall interfere, you know, with the right to own property of other people. Okay. So once you are interfering with the right of other people, then you are in the first place um, actually breaching the law or you are interfering with the right of ownership. So of can, we, can we in this instance person. say that the hospital then has interfered or breached the law um, by the fact that they embarked on a demolition exercise while the squatters had no alternative arrangements? On the contrary, kind of, you know, on the contrary. Was their move justified? You know, yeah, you know, on the contrary, I mean, the, the, let's start from here. On the contrary, it is the squatters that interfered to, uh, with, with the right of ownership of that property of the hospital. So in the first place, the squatters did not have any right to interfere with that right of the hospital. Right. But given that they do, what then is their status? See their status. And given that they've been there for such a long um, period of time. Uh, exactly. You see, and that is where the the issues, you know, of squatter rights arises, mm. because even though you come there not being a lawful occupant of the place, the law says that if you live there. You know, between some number of years, under the Limitations Act, at least 12 years. If Have you the refugees there, been there for 12 years? Well, I believe so. You know, but the question is, were they the subject to the, those rights? Were they prompted? Were they given notices? Did somebody give them? I mean... Does uh, it matter if they've been there for a continuous period of 12 mm, years? Do mm. all these things matter? Well, it, it does. See, when you are there for 12 years, and within those 12 years, somebody kept notifying you, Mm -hmm. that please um, you know this land belongs to me okay. make sure that you pay for the land but is notification enough of, not notification notification is not enough but it may well be that they even demand some rent from them and perhaps they were paying some rent they used to pay some taxes and so on and so forth and once you do those things it actually means that the right that you are enjoying is subject mm -hmm. to the right of the person to whom you are paying those rents to right. yes so yes squatters may have some limited right you know, within the context of the discussion we are having, ownership of property and so on and so forth. But you see, there's a bigger picture sometimes when it comes to do with the rights that they have to housing, the right to decent living and accommodation. In fact, it goes even to the right to life and the right to, you know, a right to life and right to decent participation in our society. And these rights are supposed to be guaranteed by our state institutions, government, you know, state agencies. So the question really uh, goes beyond the immediate right between the squatter and the owner of the property and the right of the, of the squatter against the state. Francis, what is the right procedure for evicting squatters? Is there a, a legal route that one can take to evict squatters of their, absolutely, their property? Absolutely. You know, squatters are trespassers. 
and if someone trespasses with your land or someone unlawfully enters your land what you need to do is to go to court uh, you can only evict them by a court order you cannot as of right do we know if that's what happened with the budumburam case? honestly um, with the budumburam case i have no idea mm. you know what exactly happened well, there's, know, there's uh, um, allegations that there was some police brutality and and that is, is that where why if you indeed need a, a court order to be able to evict people why do they need the police to use force well you know sometimes you know even when a court makes an order you may need to go there with police you know because when it comes to evicting to a group use of force people, brutality well minimum force when they need be you know minimum force but you see what we have realized and observed over the years you know with our ghana police is that when it comes to this thing professionality usually is non-existent so they end up in in the process of uh, vindicating one person's right they violate several others right you know before they uh, succeed For well, example, what action can squatters, the squatters take in this instance uh, do they have a right to appeal uh, well the, the squatters absolutely will have some you know um, limited right right it will be right to appeal to whom maybe to the government for some decent resettlement you see especially when the squatters have been there for a number of years and they have acquired you know they, they have built their life around you know um, that place their daily living um, uh, sources of food their children what we do in case of evicting these squatters is to create many more social problems so if they have any appeal it will be appealed to the government for some form of relocation some form of like some amnesty to them to just really some sos call because those people that are being evicted when care is not taken they are the people who will breed them i'm robberies they are the people who will be like child prostitutes they will enter into child you know labor and so on and so forth these and many others are part of our millennium challenge you know millennium uh, you know goals that we want to as achieve for ourselves by doing these things, we further deepen those problems and those challenges. Okay. So if they have any appeal at all, it's appeal to the government for some, you know, intervention, some assistance, so that they can properly relocate. Okay, now let's talk about adverse possession. You kind mm. of touched on it briefly when you talked about the fact that um, they, if you've been, you've occupied someone's um, property or land for a continuous period of 12 years, and they haven't notified you, uh, there have been no notifications as to um, try to get you or make you aware that someone owns that land. Mm. Tell us about this this process where one can just walk onto someone's land and you know just occupy it for such a long period of time and eventually becomes theirs yes i mean that is what the law says you see it is not um, um we are not saying that but it is the law the law says that if somebody um, occupies um a property um which does not belong to another in fact usually it's a property that does not belong to another it's a vacant property and you occupy the property without any um and you have a peaceful enjoyment of that property without any opposition from anybody after 12 years nobody can bring an action against you in fact you can then take steps to properly um possess the land you and being the squatter of or the course, trespasser of course well, what is and the perfect, rationale and perfect rationale that behind this law i mean i've bought my property for whatever reason maybe i'm away or whatever it is i haven't mm. been able to develop it or occupy it doesn't necessarily mean that anyone can just come and just take that land well, without paying you know, anything the, you know the point is that the purpose for you acquiring the property is because you want to use it for something and you know in law possession is more important than you know title you can hold title to the property and you are not in possession someone else is in possession after 12 years it will be difficult for you to assert your title against that person except when you have actually perfected your title even if you have perfected your title the limitations degree says that after 12 years you cannot bring an action to recover that piece of land from the person so in any event what that person need to do is to quickly take steps to perfect that title so does that mean that you do as a legal or true owner of the land now have to take steps to transfer title to this trespasser no you don't have to in fact for that trespasser who have been you know <clears throat> the fact is that having been on the property for continuously without in, uh, any interruption for 12 years you can no more be described as a trespasser in fact the, you have actually acquired a prescriptive title to the land what you need to do what kind of acts must uh, a squatter or a trespasser do to amount to possessing the land well or to dispossess the true owner well, having is been it there, just 
just to, it was it is enough to just occupy the line just stay on the line you know the, the point is that <clears throat> when we say you are an adverse possessor you have entered into the land that doesn't belong to you that doesn't belong to you and you are actually doing things that the owner of the property should be doing so maybe built a, a fence or a you wall have, you, you have actually gone and paid the property some property rate on the same piece of land with what documentation oh, please in ghana it is possible you build you you build a so single, you 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 see you build a, a single vacant room. piece of land you enter, you enter maybe uh, built a one bedroom uh, hut you are, or whatever you and there. you start paying property tax and you're actually there and you know you you've got to ama you've you've done all the things you must do and you are there for the past 12 years you say maybe let's say 13 years and nobody came and said the land belongs to him or her what if the person had traveled abroad well that is why it is important that it is not enough for you to say that i have bought land and you don't go and take possession so when at least okay. you must put somebody there what? who will take effective possession is it okay land? for you to maybe build a wall like some people usually at do least or maybe foundation something up to a certain you can level. even the law says that you can even plant economic trees and put some sign you know some notice there so if you have all these things in place of, things like if that if you have all these things in place mm. and uh, a trespass actually occupies the land he won't be able to I dispossess mean, you no 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 he has notice okay. In fact, he has actual notice, and he may even have constructive notice. If you are not there, and others go, and in fact, if the situation is such that he should know that the land belongs to somebody, he cannot allege that. Uh, well, it was a vacant land. He came and there was nobody there, and you know he was just given. So you can't bring an action for recovery of your land after twelve years. Is, is there no, any you defense cannot. at all for you, you? You cannot. You cannot. In fact, that is a limitation decree. That is, so after twelve years, that's it. That is it. You, that you is, just let go of it that. It is a statutory limitation. Is this very common in Ghana? In, in your many years of well, practice, have you come well, across such well, cases where squatters um, and trespassers have been able to dispossess true <coughs> owners of property? Well, I, I truthfully, I haven't actually seen a squatter dispossess a true owner. But I've been in cases where limitations have been raised and they've succeeded. So this happens in Ghana? Of course. Squatters it, have been yes. able to dispossess you see, you see, the point owners. is that sometimes there are ways legally where you can go around it. Mm -hmm you are limited by time mm -hmm. but you probably as a true owner can actually just do a letter by a lawyer mm -hmm. you know and assert that the land belongs to you uh, and that you want them to come for some negotiations and other things just by a letter to come and prove your title okay you know? what happens if it's a, a leasehold land i mean if, if or even freehold mm -hmm. that the squatter has dispossessed you of what what happens to him eventually well the, the, the point is that once a squatter has been there and limitations actually prescribe title to that squatter mm -hmm. what that squatter need to do is to do a statutory declaration mm -hmm. that i've been on this land for the past 20 years nobody has asserted his right so so I, he still maintains all the rights and powers of a freeholder yes holder. i am the one who owns the land and then publish it in the gazette or in the newspaper if nobody makes any claim you can go to the last commission and make sure that the land is plotted and registered in your name what if it's a leasehold land do you, you what know happens what happens when if, if the lease comes to an end you know if it is a lease then that one uh you, you cannot you know when the lease come to an end the land reverts back to the original owner right so that one you cannot so you he's know, still bound by the covenant contained in the absolutely lease. absolutely if it is a lease right so there's absolutely no defense at all for a true owner what about uh um, you know so the true owner I see, or disability or something you know the true owner needs to be proactive mm. equity aids the vigilant mm. not the indolent you see and you must make sure that if you want to appeal to the law appeal to equity you must be seen as somebody who is proactive enough if you have got a land make sure you have entered the land put somebody there get someone get plant some trees plant some coconut plant some you know economic trees that will last several years that way you can have some minimum control over your land you would have done overt actions that prove that the land is yours but if you sit down and look in looking 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 20 years down the line you come and say that it's you no guys are squatters move out of my land i'm sorry it will be difficult for you finally francis uh, what happens when the squatter dies well a, if a, he a has squatter who has successfully yeah if he, has, if, if he now has a prescriptive right and he dies those who claim through him his children his children's children so if he has a will yes. they will go on yes, yes, if he dies will, as, as a, in fact he can give it as, as well. a gift he can transfer it because he has acquired a prescriptive right wow okay very very interesting topic here Absolutely. um wow i i hope uh, landowners will be listening and um doing the right things to 
kind of you know maintain or claim title and ownership of their lands because this is quite alarming yeah um, thank you very much for your time this morning um francis xavier sosu was my guest this morning and he's from fx law and associates and they specialize in human rights and public interest law and i must add that he's been very instrumental in a lot of human rights and public interest cases thank you very much once again for your okay. time thank right you. so um benny's standing by now and he has some comments for us from our social media platforms benny what are people saying about squatters rights this very morning very interesting topic sandra and people are expressing their views as well um, uh, who knew that squatters had so many rights? But here's some of the messages that we've got this morning. Uh, the first one's on Facebook here from Francis Doku. He says, squatters also need to be protected. It's no fault of theirs that they find themselves in that situation. So that's one opinion right there. Um, we also have other messages here on Facebook. This one here is from Patrick Asamwa. He says, now that the electioneering time is near, government seems to have abandoned its responsibilities for campaign pain. Wow. Some very candid comments in regards to this. Also, Shadrach Arthur, he says, uh, I just find it interesting how we say squatters have the right to occupy someone's property. Does it mean if I travel and someone breaks into my home to live in there, I will not be able to sack them? Very, very interesting comments there. Let's move down to Twitter. And uh, we've got a message here from Ifya Candy. She said, this topic is very interesting. And I never knew that there were anything like squatters' rights. And those are the messages that we've got in so far. Um, hold on a moment. OK, appears that we do have some more messages. All right. Uh, okay, this one's from Francis Owusu. Not even a bit of it is enforced. Everybody deserves fair treatment. That's according to Francis Owusu. We'll see if there are any more messages here. No, that's the one, last one from them. And, um, okay. Those are the messages that have come in so far from our interactive pages. As you can see, people are really astonished as to the rights that squatters do have. And hopefully, they are aware of the rights that they have as well. Right, Benny, very interesting comments there. But I must say, um, Shadrach got it a little bit wrong. I think he's a bit confused. If you bring someone to live in your home, they cannot dispossess you of this because you're aware that the house or the land or property or whatever belongs to someone. This is in relation to trespassers, people yes. who come onto the land without any authority But Sandra, at all. I mean, really, in this day and age right now, if you have the money to buy land, would you just let it sit there? Exactly. That is the question. Exactly. That is the question. Thank you very much for that, no. Benny. Right.